Okay, today's video we're going to go through another Unit 5 paper. I've had this ready for a while, but um, because my students haven't all done it, I was keeping it up my sleeve so I can use it as a second mock for my Year 13 students. Um, anyway, it's time for, to record it. So just a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed and for commenting on the record number of people who came to watch videos in the build-up to Unit 4. Um, thank you very much for your support. We do need you to also um, share and like the video, so just to show your appreciation, because that sends us up higher in the YouTube algorithms. Next year, I'm going to also start doing the non-international edXL exam. Okay, so this is October's international exam for Unit 5. The exam is on Wednesday, so it's a few days before, so it'll give you a chance to have a look at another complete rundown. Okay, so the multiple choice. The first one is about fusion reactions, and fusion reactions are the primary energy source of stars. Which row gives the conditions necessary for fusion in stars? Well, you want a high density and you want a high temperature, so the only one with both is A. Okay, this is a common question in Unit 5, either in multiple choice or more um, routinely in a descriptive answer where you've got to explain it in terms of kinetic theory of gases. Okay, astronomers number two, the astronomers use stellar parallax to determine the distances to nearby stars. Now, by nearby, they mean relatively nearby, not in very distant galaxies. Which of the following must be known to use stellar parallax? Well, the answer is A. You, have, you basically use the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So you have the Earth here, the Sun there, the distant star there, we know this distance, and you use the angle, so you actually measure this angle that this right angle triangle makes. Yeah, you actually do t um, two sides of the sun, so you get double the angle, so you do it six months later, you'll be the other side of the sun, and the star will move against the um, constellations in the background, so you can see the angle change, and now they can measure the angles quite accurately, uh, up to like um, a second uh, of degree. Okay, and that's what parallax means. Okay, a, a parallax is to do with the fact that it's changing position because you're not looking at it straight ahead, just like in tennis. And a parsec, yeah, is a is when the, you get this angle to be one second, yeah, which is at one out of three thousand six hundred the of a degree. Yeah, so parsec is when it's one second of, degree of the angle. Okay, so the other ones are incorrect. So you just need to know you use the distance, which is also called one astronomical unit, which is approximately 150,000 kilometers. Okay, question three. Which of the following statements about nuclear binding energy is correct? Okay, the answer is uh, D binding energy per nucleon increases to a maximum, that will be where iron is, and then decreases as the proton number increases. So the binding energy per nucleon is a way of um, comparing um, nuclei um, based on their size. So you divide it, the binding energy, which is how much energy you require, to basically separate it into its constituent nucleons. And the one that has the highest binding energy per nucleon is the most stable. And the most stable um, is iron. So iron is the most stable nucleus. So this is just something you need to revise. So binding energy and binding per energy per nucleon are different, so make sure you revise that. Question four, a mass is suspended from a spring and it's oscillating vert vertically. The oscillations are damped, so that means it slows down. Which statement is correct? The damping force is always in the opposite direction to the acceleration. No, the damping force is proportional to the acceleration. What B is correct, the damping force is always in the opposite direction of the velocity because it's basically opposing the motion. So it has to be in the opposite uh, direction to the velocity. So if it's, if it's going this way, yeah, the damping force will slow it down. And if it's going this way, it will also slow it down. And the force is always uh, directed to the center of the oscillation. So it's trying to stop it from moving. Hope that makes sense. Question five. A star is moving away from Earth. 
So if it's moving away from Earth, we call that redshift. The wavelengths of spectral lines received from the star are measured. So that's when it's moving. The wavelengths are not the same as the wavelengths of the same lines measured in the lab. So this is when they're stationary relative to us, obviously because the lab will be on Earth. And when the same spectral lines are observed in a moving object, the star that's moving away from us, the, they shift. And the amount of shift, delta, lambda, yeah, for example, the wavelength changes by a certain amount, allows you to work out the recession velocity, which explains difference in the wavelength. The light arrives, the D is the answer, the light arrives at the Earth with a longer wavelength, because remember, if it's moving away from us, we call it redshift, so the increase of wavelength will become positive, okay? And that's what redshift means. So it's moving towards us. It will move towards the blue end of the spectrum compared to where it will be if it was stationary. Okay? So it's called the Doppler effect. The moon is gradually moving away from the Earth. The gravitational potential of the, of the Earth due to the moon, yeah, and the gravitational force between the Earth and the moon are both changing. So one column is gravitational potential. So it's a bit like potential energy. is potential energy per kilogram if you want it simplified. So it's joules per kilogram, and this is Newton's. Okay, so um, the moon is moving away. So if it's moving away, the gravitational force will get weaker because gravitational force is equal to gm m over r squared. Yeah, so if it's moving away, the force will be weaker. So this should be decreases, so it has to be a or b. And the gravitational potential, if it's moving away, the potential energy, if you like, if you're moving away from the, the um, Earth, you're getting more potential energy or more potential per kilogram. Okay, so obviously it will want to go back down to Earth, so it's got more potential energy. Okay, so the answer is B. Question 7 over the page. A small satellite of mass 122 kilograms is orbiting the Earth. The satellite is orbiting at a height above the surface of the Earth, equal to the radius of the Earth. Okay, so you basically got R and 2R. Which of the following is, a pro is the approximate weight of the satellite? Okay, so um, G is GM over R squared, and the G dash at 2R will be GM, same mass, over 2R all squared. So this has to be all squared. So basically this, uh, and this one brings in a factor of 2 squared, so it's 4, so it's g over 4, and we know initially it would have been 1,200 newtons, yeah, approximately, if you multiply that out. So it's going to be a quarter of 1,200 newtons, which is 300 newtons. Then, which row of the table gives a relative ionizing power and penetration of gamma radiation? So penetration is very high for gamma. It's the most penetrating of the alpha, beta, gamma radioactivity. And the ionizing power is low. Remember, alpha it has the highest ionizing power. So the ones with the line, the row with two ticks wins, and it's B. Okay. Question nine is a hertzsprung russell diagram. Four positions, P, Q, R, and S are shown, where different types of stars are located. Which this comes up in every exam, the hertzsprung russell diagram, so you need to make sure you understand it. Which of the following? is a possible evolutionary path for stars initially in P. Well, P are larger than the Sun, but they're on the main sequence. They then become a red giant. Depending on their size, there will be a different size planet and therefore a different size red giant and therefore slightly different in term temperature. And then when they run out of fuel completely, they collapse into white dwarfs. So the evolution will be P, S to Q. R is not uh, relevant because we're starting at P, okay, which is the following possible evolutionary paths uh, for stars initially in area P. So R would do the same, R would become, you know, R would be more like the sun, it will go to become a red giant when it runs out of hydrogen and then eventually becomes a white dwarf. Question 10, a simple pendulum is placed, th um, is displaced through a small angle, yeah, remember this equation only works if it's a relatively small angle because you want to keep uh, air resistance neg negligible. The frequency of the oscillation is determined. The length of the pendulum is then doubled. By what factor will the frequency of the oscillation change? Well, the equation is t equals 2 pi root L over g. Therefore, the period is proportional to the length. 
if the length is doubled, the period will increase by the square root of the double, so it would be a square root of 2, and frequency is inversely proportional to t, so you've got to inverse the square root of 2, so frequency is proportional to the inverse of the square root of 2. Okay, and that gives you an answer A. Okay. Oh, my camera is on the block. It's losing its focus. So, I need to go through question 11. Let's see if it's coming back. It's done this once before, so it's it's something I'm aware of that it does uh, from time to time. It then got better on its own. So what I'll do is I'm going to stop the video at the multiple choice section and then start it again with a uh, subsequent video to do the written questions. Okay, bye for now. I'll see you in the next video um, shortly. Bye.